Right, hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. So first talk we've got today is Karen Simpson from Wessex Water, who's going to talk to us about the uh, emissions reductions and uh, adaptation that they are doing. So um, without further ado, take it away, Karen. Thanks, James. So welcome. I'm the Community Connector Manager for Wessex Water and I look after the Chippenham area. So it's a pilot project and Chippenham is the first community to, to have a Community Connector Manager. Um, we've also got a sister project in Bridport as well. And we're trying to change the way we work with communities and be far more embedded within the community, work with, alongside them. I will talk a bit, a bit more about the project at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to start by explaining the importance of adapting to the impacts of climate change and how collectively that we can all mitigate to reduce our carbon. I'll then talk about where our water comes from and what we can do to save water, energy and money. And I'll then move on uh, to looking at where our wastewater goes. Um, and what we can do to reduce the impact of storm overflows. And finally, I'll outline the extra support that's available to those who are struggling to pay their bills or some of the, activity, and some of the activities that we're supporting through the Community Connectors project. So there's two parts to the climate change challenge. Adaptation relates to learning to live with the baked in climate impacts that we've already witnessing. Um, they manifest themselves through the water cycle due to the extreme weather events that we see in the form of floods and droughts. And this is really a story about too much and not enough rainfall when we need it. Sorry. I missed a bit. <laughs> uh, mitigation relates to fossil fuel use and saving energy or switching to renewable sources can also save us money. Water is a heavy resource to move around and pump through our network um, and through our supply pipes and sewers. However, the greenhouse gas emissions from heating water in our homes amounts to seven times the greenhouse emission, gas emissions that the whole water sector produces. So from its end-to-end -end process, from collecting water, abstracting it, uh, treating it, pumping it around the network, and then collecting your wastewater, treating it and disposing of it. So our, as a sector, our greenhouse gas emissions are seven times less than heating water in the home. Heating water also accounts for 17% of domestic energy use. So by using less water in the home, you can actually save on your energy bills. So Wessex Water are committed to meeting operational net zero by 2030 and total carbon uh, net zero by 2040. So that includes the carbon that we use in our capital schemes. So this map shows that much of England is now water stressed. What this means is there's insufficient water resources available to meet demand, particularly in dry years like we had last year. And this is due to a combination of increasing population, more droughts, and also the need to protect our wildlife and biodiversity. And this slide illustrates average water use for England and how water is used in the home. And you can see that the largest component of water is for pers personal washing. So that's 43% in the blue part of the donut. And that's for showers and baths. Demand for showering has grown significantly over the last generation. And of course, this is hot water. So it has a significant impact on energy use too. A toilet flushing represents just over 20% of domestic water use. 
and that's like the sludgy brown orangey color in the donut. So where does our water come from in Chippenham? It's supplied through a series of boreholes at ivy fields. So that's from the back of Charter Road area. Um, so it's groundwater fed, comes from the underground aquifer. And the wells, um, after effectively they're wells. And so after um, abstraction, we treat the water to drinking water standards and it's pumped to the highest part of Chippenham, up top of Malmesbury Road, Harden Hewish Lane. Is it Lane? I think so. Where the schools are. <laughs> um, and then for, it, it's, so it's stored in the Harden Hewish reservoirs, which are covered. You might not even realize that's where your water is stored. It's, it's just a, it's like a grassy bank behind the fence. And then from there, it then goes into the distribution network to, to feed our homes and businesses in the town. It's also supplemented with water from Allington as well. So we're able to move water around the network. To, so if, for example, Ivy Fields was taken offline for any reason, we wouldn't have our water cut off. We could, we're able to move it around. And that's why we, we spend an awful lot of, um, or use a lot of energy moving water around, and it's very heavy. So I've got a question for you now. Any guesses as to how much you use every day? Anyone want to volunteer a, a number in litres? 10, 10 litres a day. Okay, anyone else? 100. 100, 10 times more. Any other suggestions? Yeah? 140. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you're very close. <laughs> So the, the figure sh shows that the average for England and Wales is at currently 145 litres a day, and the average for Wessex is also the same. It does depend on whether you're on a metered supply or an unmetered supply, so people on metres tend to use a bit less than people that don't pay for, for the amount that they use. Um, well done, very good. Get. If you come down to me on the stand later, I'll give you a prize. <laughs> I forgot to bring it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how much you use is governed by a combination of your water fixtures, that's the infrastructure, and your water using routines or repeated behaviours. So on the left-hand side, there's a list of, sort of one-off actions that you can take to improve your water in infrastructure. What's on the right-hand side, some of the water-saving actions to repeat and build into your everyday routines and habits. So on the sand, I've got some examples of free water saving devices. I haven't actually, I've brought them up here for you to have a look at because I've only got one of each and I was worried they'd disappear while I was up here. <laughs> uh, so you f feel free to have a look at them later. <laughs> um, you can order them either through the, the Wessex Water website. I've got a QR code down on the stand. So you can, if you've got a smartphone, you can scan the QR code. It'll take you to the basket. Or uh, I've got slips of paper that you can fill out and order, and I'll, I'll arrange them to be sent to you. So we have a regulated shower head or a shower regulator. You need one or the other, not both. They're not suitable for electric showers because they're already water efficient. We've got a four-minute shower timer. And we've also got a Buffalo cistern displacement bag for the toilet. This is really for older style toilets with a lever flush. They have a bigger cistern. If you've got a modern push button toilet, that's already water efficient. But what we are finding is these modern push button toilets tend to leak. 10% um, of modern toilets are probably leaking at any one time. They can use up to 400 liters a day. And we've got some little dis leak dis detection strips that you can use to, to identify whether your toilet is leaking. You don't necessarily realize because the water the overflow goes into the toilet pan. 
old style toilets used to have an overflow pipe outside and it was much more visible but these days because it goes down into the pan you don't notice you might see water rippling um, but it's quite difficult to, to recognize but they say they can use a lot of water oh, I've, <laughs> I've covered that in the previous slide <laughs> Uh, leaky loos, yeah. Um, coming soon, not quite available just yet, we'll have some discounted water butts. Uh, we're working out the process of actually how to distribute them because they're quite bulky items to, 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 to get out to people. Um, so watch this space. We will be promoting them in Chippenham once we're ready to, to make that offer. What we're going to be doing is taking probably a donation in return for them, which will give to the Wildlife Trust. So water butts have traditionally been seen um, as a water saver for gardeners or for washing the car. But there's a growing interest now in the sector that water butts can also be part of the solution for storm overflows. I'll come on to that later. So that was about water supply. Moving on to wastewater. Our wastewater is collected from homes and our businesses and conveyed via partially combined sewer, ne sewer network. So that system has stormwater drains, but also foul sewage from our homes. Um, the way the network has grown as the town has developed means that stormwater gets mixed up with foul, and that's why we've now got the storm overflow problem. So our sewage gets taken to the Blackwell Hams Water Recycling Centre. Sewage treatment works in old language, so that's just on, off Pusham Way to the south of the, the town. And then it goes through a series of physical, chemical and biological processes, and then the effluent, clean effluent gets dischar dis discharged back into the River Avon. Um, it's all permitted by the Environment Agency, the standards that need to be met. So what are storm overflows? So in Chippenham, the sewer network, there are about a dozen sewer overflows in the town, permitted by the Environment Agency to prevent properties from flooding. This is when the uh, network becomes overwhelmed during heavy rainfall by releasing di dilute wastewater into the main river, um, either the main river or, or harden Hewish Brook as well. So the diagram shows that we're co the sewers are collecting um, effluent from a range of different sources, houses, businesses, roof runoff, road runoff, and foul. It goes into the single sewer, the combined system, and as it fills up, it reaches capacity, and then the top level, which is usually mostly rainfall, then ends up overflowing into the environment. But the majority of the, the effluent or the foul effluent still goes to the sewage treatment works. That is the system. That's, it's a legacy system. You know, sewers have been around for over 100 years. Uh, the, the photograph in the bottom left corner, that's actually of one of the overflows in Chippenham. Um, there's two, you can see two um, outfalls in that photo. The one with the flap is the storm overflow that has wastewater in it. The uh, pipe on the right-hand side, without the flap, that's probably uh, road runoff. They look very similar in terms of what's coming out of the, the pipes. And that's... Um, in Audley Road, if you know where the Scout Hut is in Audley Road, it's right next to the Scout Hut in Audley Road, so you can peer over the bridge into Harden Huish Brook and you can see it. So this map shows where all the other overflows are in, in Chippenham. What we're trying to do is try to be transparent about our system and our assets and where they are. Um, so I say there's about a dozen, and the size of the dot on the map indicates its relative performance and how often it spills. And then I've listed them all in, in, in the um, list on the left-hand side, and I've tried to color code it to give you an idea. So the ones in gray 
And that's uh, Bristol Road, Dallas Road, and Wood Lane. They currently don't have event duration monitors on. They will do by the end of the year. Um, whereas the ones in red, so that's the one at Audley Road, which I've already mentioned. Um, there's one on the high street, goes to the town bridge, uh, long close, and then also storm tanks at the sewage treatment works at Black Wellhams. They're the ones that spill the most often, so they're the ones that we're focusing on um, to try and make improvements. Uh, there's also one in a Moncton Park, which is shown there in orange. I put it in orange because it's slightly above what the proposed standard might be that, that we're, we're being advised is that government are likely to require a standard of no more than 10 spills per year. And it's currently, well, this is last year's data, spilling 14 times a year. And then there's three there that, um, in green, that either haven't spilt at all in the last year or have spilt below that standard that um, we're expecting to have to meet. The data's all in the public domain. So this map is from the Rivers Trust. They have a sewer map. It's our data. Our data is also on our website, but it's quite tricky to find it. So it's easy for me to say, go to the Rivers Trust, look at the sewer map, and you, you'll be able to find that data. So how can you help? Um, come back to the water butts. Sorry, got left behind. Um, so the most sustainable solution to dealing with the storm overflow problem is source control. So that's diverting rainfall away from the sewers. So roof runoff uh, can be diverted and stored through a series of water butts to attenu attenuate the flows through the sewer network so that once the um, peak flow, it, 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 we, get, we get past the peak flow, that water can actually then either return back into the sewer and it'll go to the sewer stream works and be treated. Or even better is to, to remove that flow from the sewer network entirely, then we don't have to pump and treat rainwater in effect, which isn't very efficient. Um, and that the solutions can be irrigation systems into your garden or rain gardens and soakaways. And we're about to start a pilot project in Chippenham. We're looking for volunteer households who might be interested in having some water butts fitted and some irrigation systems to try out the best way of dealing with this. So if you come to see me on the stand later, I'll take your details if you're interested. It is limited to people living in Chippenham, but um, yeah, it's quite exciting to be taking part in this trial. So we also have 13,000 sewer blockages each year that we need to go and deal with. And they can actually contribute to storm overflow operations. So I know the one at the overflow in Audley Road operated a, a few times last November and caused a pollution incident in Hard Newish Brook, Brook and it was because of wet wipes that were being flushed down the toilet. So that's, that's our customers not um, helping the situation really. Um, so we, the advice is to only flush the three P's down the loo, so that's um, paper, poo and pee, um, and also to make sure you don't wash leftover food or cooking fats down the sink as well. And I've got some um, waste devices down on the stand um, for you to take away today, which can help with that. Most, wet, most um, blockages are caused by wet wipes, um, and even those that are labelled flushable. So these are the um, devices. I've got a, a few down, a limited number down on the stand, but we can also order you some in if we run out today. So the next thing is to be a rain saver. So this is the, the pilot that I mentioned. Uh, we're looking currently for 200 homes in Chippenham to take part. Um, as part of that, we'll also provide a free um, internal plumbing audit 
water efficiency audit or fit, fit devices. So we'll, we'll try and give your home a, a, a thorough overhaul in terms of water management, both internally and externally. And if we do manage to um, divert your roof run, run off away from the sewer, you'll actually be entitled to a, a rebuilt rebate on your water bill so there's an element within your water bill that you pay at the moment that covers rainfall disposal and if we can show that we've diverted that roof runoff and it's not entering the sewer then you'll be entitled to a, an ongoing discount on your bill We also work in partnership with Wiltshire Wildlife Trust to run the Water Guardians. So Wessex Water fund the programme, but Wessex, uh, Wiltshire Wildlife Trust run it. And that's a series of volunteers who walk the waterways. So we've got a few in Chippenham um, who, who regularly wa walk either up, the, up and down the main river or Harden Hewish Brook. The other brooks, Ladyfield and Pudding Lane, are, are probably more tricky to walk along because they're not very accessible and you can only see them over various road bridges but we've got a network of volunteers that are the eyes ears and nose of for us looking for making sure there's no pollution incidents if they are they get called into Wessex water and we respond within two hours um, if it is confirmed as a pollution incident we report that back to the environment agency so it gets re re recorded properly and and obviously dealt with um, there's a couple of extra things that you can do as a water guardian. It's up, uh, optional. So we provide you with a high-vis jacket and a litter picker. You can go and collect litter while you're out on your patrol. Uh, we ha you have an ID badge as well. Um, and also, if you spot any interesting species along your walk, maybe an otter or kingfisher or some other um, species of interest, you're encouraged to report those to Wiltshire Biological Records Centre so that they're keeping a record of where our biodiversity is. Almost there. <laughs> um, so we provide extra support. Um, we have a range of schemes that help customers that are struggling with their bills. You can spread the cost of your water bill if you're struggling, uh, pay directly from benefits, repay debt and get back on track. Uh, we can dive, um, signpost you to debt advice services that we fund um, and you can save money um, maybe with, a, with having a water meter fitted. We've helped more than 53,000 customers facing hardship. And over 90% of those have had help um, with water debt and now back on track. And more than 48,000 customers are benefiting from lower bills. But we actually want to try and double that reach. So if you, know, if you or you know anybody in, in Chippenham that are struggling financially who might benefit from a, a reduction in their bill and some support, please, I do encourage you to get them to get in touch with us. And we also want to give all our customers the best service at all times. And we know that everyone's needs are different. Uh, and we can help through our priority services register. So the energy suppliers also have a priority services register. And it's important. It's free to sign up. You can self-refer um, if you have uh, a disability or a health condition that perhaps prevents you from carrying water. So if there was a... a, a an occasion where your water had to be turned off for a period of time. If we already know where people are that can't carry water, our operatives will come and deliver that water to them. Um, it could be that they need um, a bill, uh, our bills or information in a different format, maybe Braille, large print, another language, and we can accommodate that through the Priority Services Register. Or maybe... Um, set up a password to protect up against bogus, bogus doorstep calls and really the best thing is just to, to give us a call and our advisors can talk through the different options and it might be that someone has a temporary vulnerability maybe they've come out of hospital and they need to go on the, t the priority services register for a short time or it can be a permanent thing and it might be because of old age and frailty um, but it's best to, to give us a call. And even maybe young mums with ch young children, 
could benefit from being in the priority services register until their children get older. If um, you've got a young baby, you don't want to be walking down the road to the corner to go and collect water if, if your water has been um, had to be turned off for an operation, operational problem. So there's a whole range of different needs that we can try and cater for. So uh, finally, the Community Connectors um, project. So through the Community Connectors project, we've recently awarded grants to community groups and local organizations in Chippenham to deliver eight different projects that support local people, uh, either through uh, rising cost of living, raising awareness of the water supply and wastewater system, or to improve the local environment. Uh, we're waiting to hear um, to confirm that they've signed the T's and C's before I go public and announce the su su successful projects, but hopefully next week we'll be in a position to announce who we will be working with. Uh, so thanks for listening, and are there any questions? Um, and do come and see me down on the stand later and order your free water saving and waste products. Go on, Mel. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, probably not. I'm not up to date with this legislation. I know that's what's proposed. So at the moment, we have a standard for um, bathing waters. So on the coast, our bathing waters are... The, the overflows that go to our bathing waters are limited to three spills per bathing season. So that's from May to September. And actually, that probably equates to about the same as 10 spills a year bearing in mind it's wetter in the winter. Um, there aren't any limits on the duration. Usually, if an overflow is spilling for a long period, when it's now, you know, post-storm event and it's dry, it's probably because of groundwater infiltration. So our sewers so aren't leak-proof, and the water actually, the groundwater, if the water table's high, the water will then get into the sewers and that's what's happening probably when overflows are going off for we've seen reports of overflows going off for days and days in dry weather it's probably groundwater that's getting into the sewer yeah yeah which is why it's important to to report both to give you an idea of, of what that spill profile looks like yeah no problem yeah okay no problem um, Yeah, so I've been in the sector quite a long time, 30 odd years, and when I started my career, we were talking about sustainable urban drainage, which is exactly that, ponds, swales. Um, at that stage, no one was prepared to um, take them on because of the, it was the maintenance. Who, who is going to maintain them? Uh, it, it's been, it, progress has been very, very slow. Um, New, new developments now are being mandated to include them. So there's a couple up at the new Birds Marsh estate. Yeah, they do look a bit, bit of a mess. I don't think they're quite working properly yet. <laughs> um, but they, they, that's a far more sustainable approach for new development but it's much harder to then retrofit that into the existing infrastructure. But we are looking at that. Is, are there places that we could potentially replace a storm overflow with a properly constructed wetland or pond? Um, at the moment, unfortunately, the legal framework doesn't really drive us to doing that. 
Um, of course, there's multiple benefits from, from putting those systems in place. You've got amenity benefits and wildlife benefits as well as resolving storm discharges. Um, but there's probably not the political will at the moment. But I think because storm overflows are very topical, there's perhaps a groundswell that will force that. Um, but at the moment, as a business, we are regulated to deliver outputs, which effectively is conventional treatment of storm overflows, which means putting a tank in the ground. It's not the most sustainable solution, but the legislation doesn't allow us to produce. What we want to work towards is outcomes and be able to put in those wetlands that um, have those multiple benefits. Um, tanks are not great because it also means pouring concrete. It's more costly, which goes on to bills. So we, we are lobbying government to try and change the legal framework. Okay, I'm not familiar with that scheme. I'm not familiar with that scheme. Yeah. 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 What 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 we're currently missing, but the government have finally, in the last couple of months, agreed to end developers' right to connect the public sewer. So there's been a piece of legislation around for the last 13 years off the back of the 2007 floods that has not been enacted. And the government have now announced in the last couple of months that they will enact that piece of legislation, which means that whilst a development may put in um, a sustainable drainage solution, if the developer thinks it's too expensive and wants to wiggle out of it, they still have a right to connect to the public sewer. And then we then take that extra runoff from the new development into a sewer system that can't cope. So that's, we don't have the powers to stop that. So that's a piece of legislation that we've been lobbying for for quite a long time and will help solve the problem. Leakage. Yes, we do have leakage, yes. So, we, we, yeah, we, we, we are planning to, in the next five years, cut our leakage in half. There will always be leakage. It's impossible to get, remove it completely. That partly is to do with weather conditions. So, frost thaw in the winter, we get cracked pipes, burst mains. Um, that will cause leaks. Um, also, generally, our pipes are laid in the road, and heavy traffic lorries going over will eventually cause leaks as well. So we'll, we'll never... It will be impossible. It's, it's the nature of our assets being buried underground as well. We'll never get rid of all the leaks, but we're actively trying to reduce that down and trying to cut that by half in the next five years. It is a cost, yeah, it is a large cost. Yeah, it is. I agree. <laughs> It does, uh, yeah. It all costs money, and yeah, it's a balance between what's affordable and, yeah, yeah. Has anyone else got any questions? Or okay, thank you. Thanks, James.